Right now at noon, more than 20 people are dead after a deadly tornado sweeps through Alabama. We'll have the latest on search and rescue efforts. And House Democrats widen their probe of President Trump will tell you the new actions they're taking. Plus, Portillo's officially celebrates the opening of its newest location. We'll tell you what this Chicago-style restaurant brings to Madison. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at Noon. Good evening, everyone. I'm Mark Kane. Thanks for tuning in to News 3 Now this noon on this Monday. Hope you all had a nice weekend. We'll get to those stories in a bit, but first let's head over to the Weather Center. Meteorologist Chris Reese has a look at your first alert forecast. A chilly start to the day, to say the least. Yeah, especially by March standards, that is for sure. And it's still very cold out there. I know I woke up this morning, the sunshine kind of hitting me on the face. It gives you the false impression that it's warm. So let's go ahead and take a look outside right now. This is the Edgewater Sky Cam. Plenty of blue sky, but the temperature only three degrees above zero right now. Winds out of the west at nine miles per hour. But check out that wind chill, negative 12. Yeah, a lot of us are seeing those wind chills well below zero. Negative one, still the temperature in Juneau right Right now, six in Milwaukee, seven in Kenosha. Camp Douglas also at one. When you factor in the wind, it feels like 18 degrees below zero as you work your way towards Camp Douglas, feeling like 12 below zero for us. For our friends in Janesville, it feels like negative 14. So it is certainly cold out there. Juno feeling like negative 20. Now the wind chill advisories have all been allowed to come down now. So that is good news. But as you plan your day ahead, do expect those temperatures to not really warm up all that much more. We'll top out around six degrees, some cloud cover moving in overnight that will keep us at least a little bit warmer, but for the main or for the the big story, excuse me, is that we're going to see those temperatures and feels like temperatures rather staying below zero going through the rest of this afternoon. Yeah, it's rough to take this time of year. Yep. All right, we'll check back in a few minutes. Thank you, Chris. A devastating tornado outbreak swept across several southern states and caused a disaster near Auburn, Alabama. At least 23 people were killed in Lee County by the deadliest tornado since Moore, Oklahoma in 2013. The twister that destroyed homes, businesses and lives was one of a dozen reported in Alabama yesterday. The National Weather Service says the tornado was at least an EF3 with winds between 136 and 165 miles per hour. Our primary focus is uh, assisting those who uh, have uh, lost their homes uh, and certainly their loved ones and concentrating on our search and rescue efforts. In 2018, only 10 people in the entire United States were killed by tornadoes. That means more than twice as many people were killed in yesterday's disaster in Alabama than all of last year. Police are investigating what happened to a man who showed up at a hospital Saturday morning with a gunshot wound. Officers sent to the hospital around 6 a.m. after a 30-year-old Madison man showed up with a gunshot wound to the leg. Officials believe the man was shot during a disturbance that happened inside an apartment in the 2300 block of Ally Drive during a party. And the man who was shot on Madison's east side early Sunday morning was targeted by the shooter. Madison police say a 22-year-old Madison man was walking in the 1100 block of Mendota Street just before 1 a.m. when he was shot. The victim told police he was walking when a dark-colored SUV pulled up near him and someone in the SUV started firing a gun. Investigators say it appears the victim was targeted and that the shooting is likely part of an ongoing dispute. A University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee professor is accused of sexually assaulting a student he was advising in a Ph.D. program. 55-year-old Anthony Azabanor is charged with two counts of second-degree sexual assault and fourth-degree sexual assault. A criminal complaint says the woman was afraid to disclose the assault for fear that she would not be granted a Ph.D. Azabanor made his initial appearance in court Sunday with cash bond set at $75. $100. Democrats in the House Judiciary Committee are expanding their investigations into President Trump, issuing requests for documents to more than 70 individuals and organizations. Nicole Killian has the details from Capitol Hill. Democrats are ramping up their investigations into President Trump. To present the case to, to American people about, uh, about obstruction of justice, uh, corruption. House Judiciary Chairman Jerry Nadler is issuing 81 document requests to individuals and entities connected to the president, including his oldest son, Donald Trump Jr., Trump Organization CFO Alan Weisselberg, and other individuals at the White House and Department of Justice. 
We're going to initiate uh, uh, proper investigations. Uh, um, the Republicans... Impeachment spent... investigations? No, no, no. Republicans see it as a fishing expedition Democrats are launching because they may not agree with what's coming in special counsel Robert Mueller's report. They're now saying we have to do our own investigation. After you had hundreds of interviews, millions of dollars spent in the Senate and the House, and they find no collusion. President Trump railed against the Democrats during a conservative convention over the weekend. There's no collusion. So now they go and morph into, let's inspect every deal he's ever done. We're going to go into his finances. We're going to check his deals. We're going to check. These people are sick. They're sick. The White House says it has received the request for documents and its lawyers will review it and respond at the appropriate time. Nicole Killian, CBS News, Capitol Hill. And Special Counsel Robert Mueller is expected to hand over his report to the Department of Justice any day now. We will no longer need to drive to Rockford or a two and a half hours to Chicago for your Italian beef fix. Portillo's at East Town Mall is now open. This is the franchise's 59th location and its third in Wisconsin. Portillo's is best known for its Chicago-style hot dogs, beef sandwiches, burgers, and salads and chocolate cake. Look, oh, it's Gary Canalti. Enjoy a Portillo. The East Town location will also offer something special just for cheeseheads, the Badger Brat. That's from Gary is today. There's more to come on News 3 at noon. I'm next. We'll see what Howard's working on in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. I don't get it. The recipe says to let the meat rest. Are you kidding? My roast gets to rest while I do all the work? There's got to be a better way. The other day, someone asked us if we had a recipe for roast beef, like their mom used to make. And if so, could we let them know how to tell when it's done? Well, I'm not sure how their mom made it, but we do have one that's mom approved, along with some tips on how to cook it to perfection. We start off by placing a bottom round roast fat side up on a rack 
in a roasting pan. The reason we place the fat side up is so as it roasts and the fat melts, it flavors the meat. Next, we rub this with a good amount of spices, including some paprika, to give it color. We roast this in a 400 degree oven for about 30 minutes to seal in the juices. Then we lower the temp and cook it low and slow. To make sure this comes out perfect, use a meat thermometer, which stays in the roast while it's in the oven. Or we can use an instant read thermometer, which gets inserted only when we want to check the temperature. If you like it medium rare, you'll want to take it out at 135 and let it rest for 10 or 15 minutes. While it rests, it keeps cooking. And when we slice this across the grain and finish it off with the pan drippings, get ready for some good eating. So here's what I suggest. Go to our website and check out our recipe for old fashioned roast beef. Plus, we have a cooking guide that'll ensure you can cook your roast to perfection every time. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a slow roasted and juicy way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. All right, Howard, thank you. There's more to come on News 3 now at noon. Up next, a frigid start to the work week here in southern Wisconsin. Is a warm up on the way? We'll find out. Meteorologist Chris Reese has more in your first solar forecast. Let's check Wall Street at the noon hour. The Dow Industrials down 300 and almost 260 points. The Nasdaq down 92 and the S&P 500 is off 31. Not a good start on Wall Street. Let's check in with Q106 Prime Director Pam Yonke in the radio suite. Hopefully your numbers aren't as low as the temperatures as well. Yeah, no, the, today for a change, I can say that uh, commodities, corn, especially beans, are red hot. And it has nothing to do with the weather, at least not yet, but soon, Mark, it will. Already conversations uh, starting to unfold in the marketplace that the corn price, for example, right now, not high enough to attract farmers to add any acres of that crop this year. It means a lot more are going to lean towards soybeans. Of course, a lot of it will depend when we do get a chance to get into the fields earlier this spring. That's also going to impact hemp production in Wisconsin. Wow, the Wisconsin 
Wisconsin Department of Agriculture just let uh, just issued the official press release on the number of applications that want to grow or process hemp in Wisconsin this year. More than 1,400 applications that they had to try to pile through uh, in the next six to eight weeks. And that is uh, compared to, what, about 300 that we had last year. And most of those are first-time growers, first-time processors in Wisconsin. So going to be kind of a learning experience, I'm sure, for everybody. Like I said, in Chicago, we're kind of keeping an eye on weather farther south. That's the area that will give us a sense of pace as far as spring planting is concerned. So far, nothing really dynamic happening in places like Texas or any of the southern plain states to uh, get the market excited. Still a lot of optimism on those soybeans that we are going to get some kind of a deal done with China. Big uh, movement on our product prices for today. Barrel cheese up two at 143. 40-pound block cheese down four at 157. And look at the double-A butter up five and a quarter cents today, 234 a pound. So see there, we're caught between a rock and a hard spot, Mark. Do we go hemp or do we go butter on a day like this? See? I think we may have lost the, missed the boat on the hemp. Everybody's I've, doing yeah. it now. Well, now all of a sudden, no kidding, the only people making money off that for right now are the people that printed the permitting process. <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll yeah, see that's right. All we'll right, see. stay all warm. Right. Thank you, Ben. You Chris Reese is over in the Weather Center with our first alert forecast. Well, yeah, temperatures have been cold across pretty much the entire country, especially this morning. I guess we can call it national uh, wish we were in Florida week, especially when you see these low temperatures on a national scale. In fact, Florida, Miami, their low temperature 69 degrees early this morning. Elsewhere, we were all anywhere from below zero to the 20s and 30s. 30s making it all the way down into Mexico earlier on this morning. Our low temperature in Madison was right at 10 degrees, which is a big deal because we set a record low this morning. The old record from 1884 was negative nine and our our forecast was negative 10. We were right on the money with that one for this morning's low temperatures. Now our for our forecast high for today is six and we've already gone above zero, but the record low uh, high for today is zero. That was all the way back in 1869. A record low for tonight, negative 12. I don't think we're going to get that cold, but nonetheless, we have seen record cold around here this morning. Temperatures are still pretty chilly across the country as a whole. Eight in Omaha, 13 in St. Louis, even New New Orleans at 47, even Brownsville, Texas, right on the Texas Mexico border, still at 39 degrees. We're at three here in Madison. The winds out of the west at nine miles per hour. That's creating a little bit of a wind chill at 12. Zero in Juno, four in the Dells right now. Our friends in Janesville at five degrees as we speak. And when you factor in the wind, it does feel like 14 degrees below zero in Janesville, 18 degrees below zero as you work your way up towards Camp Douglas. So those wind chill advisories have now been able to expire, but the truth is it is still fairly chilly out there and high pressure staying in control. That means we're going to see the sunshine and the cold weather continue at least for the next several days. And that is with this Arctic air mass out of Canada. But as we get you towards the end of the week, things do begin to lift out and we will see at least a little bit of a moderation in temperatures. Let's take you hour by hour here. We'll top out around six this afternoon, cooling down to negative two overnight tonight. It will be another cold night. But as we head into tomorrow, we'll be about 10 degrees warmer, seeing those highs anywhere from about 14 to 15 degrees or so. Wind chills tomorrow morning, about 15 to 20 degrees below zero. And then into Wednesday morning, we'll see those wind chills pretty much in the same spot, but then lifting things on out as we go towards the middle and end of the week. In fact, as we see your high temperature trends as we go through the next 10 days, I do want to point out our average highs are starting to make it into the 40s. So even though we're talking temperatures below average as we go through the next 8 to 14 days, we will begin to see them moderate in time simply because it is March. So the next 6 to 10 days are certainly going to see at least somewhat of a warming trend. We're watching the weekend for a possibility of rain and snow Friday into Saturday along with Sunday. Uh, but notice we do have temperatures above freezing by the time we get you towards next week. So 
Hang on tight, my friends. Things do at least look to warm up, even if our temperatures do stay below average. It's supposed to be 40? It's supposed to be 40. That makes it even worse. Yes, we are <laughs> nearly 30 degrees That's below cool. average today. Head to Miami. Yep. The only one spot in the country. <laughs> Seriously. All right, Chris, thank you. There's more to come on News 3 Now at noon. I'm next, Linda Barch from the Bruce Company is here answering your plant and garden questions. The number 270-9933. We'll get to your calls right after this. Linda Barch from the Roots Company here taking your calls at 270-9933. Good to see you. Good to see you, Nice flowers here. Pretty. I did bring in some nice flowers, and I wanted, there was a caller on the last time that I talked, and they were asking about Easter cactus, and I said, it's hit and miss. We have a whole bunch of Easter cactus. See how this is a nice, smooth edge to the leaf that's a little bit different than Thanksgiving cactus. you got some shamrocks there. Shamrocks. Ready for St. Pat's Day. Tis the season. Yes, it is. All right. Let's go to the phones. We'll start with Dolores from Cottage Grove. Hi, Dolores. Good afternoon. My question relates to house plants. My prayer plant, spider plant, and dracaena plants of that type, why do the tips of the leaves turn brown? Well, one of the things that I've frequently heard is that um, if you're using softened water, that can be problematic. Ideally, rainwater, but that that's a problem. And also bringing in snow and waiting for that to melt. I've tried that. So the idea is to use cold water that's not softened and flush the salts from the from the soil profile periodically. Just take it into the kitchen and run a bunch of water through it. And if there's any salt deposits on the top, take that off. Does it help to like store the water for a couple days? Yes, there is. There are certain things that are going to dissipate if you um, run the water and then let that evaporate. Through some old milk cartons or something? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, Tony from Monroe. Hi, Tony. Hi, how are you doing today? Great, how are you? Pretty good. Um, good question here. Um, I'm starting to plan my garden, and our backyard is kind of full shaded. I've never really had a lot of luck with a lot of vegetables. 
Are there any vegetables that I can grow that really will do well in full shade? Oh, vegetables, okay. Well, I know that lettuce will tolerate a, a lower light condition. And onions aren't too, too touchy either, especially since they go in earlier and the leaves on the trees aren't totally out. So that's a good one. I think radishes will tolerate it to a degree. Again, I think you know these are these are some of those earlier season plants. Spinach will tolerate uh, less sun also, but that's something that I could probably check and see if there's more than I could tell you next week. But vegetables really like sun. Yes, for the if most you're going to have the best production. It's sun. All right, let's go to Barb in Madison. Hi, Barb. Hi. Hi. Uh, my question is on peony bushes. After they're full grown and they've flowered, I get this white powdery film to the leaves. Yes. Fungus, and what can I do to prevent it? It is a fungus. It's powdery mildew, and with the rainy season that we had last year, that was particularly bad. That is not too, too problematic because the plant has already produced everything that it needs to, to survive and, and come back ne the next season. It's botrytis that's the problem. It's when it turns black. That you actually want to remove. The powdery mildew, just tolerate that, and then in the fall, cut the uh, plant right down to the ground so there aren't any of that left around the spores for them. So the it doesn't get in the soil like some, like the, the, the tomato blight? You don't, yes, you don't want, you want to get rid of that foliage that's been okay. impacted. All right, Connie in Mayville. Hi, Connie. Hi. Hi, which I question? was wondering, um, I have a tomato garden, and for the last couple of years, my tomatoes, uh, I'm like 20 feet away from a black walnut tree, uh -huh. and the ones that are closest to that walnut tree, they kind of wither. Yes. Now, I was wondering, does that have influence on that, or can I treat my, my ground with something? No, that is the black walnut, and unfortunately, as far as those, the, the roots of that black walnut extend, it, they exude something called julians, and tomatoes are very sensitive to it. You could do a raised bed, otherwise, or just if you could move your tomatoes further away. Um, yeah. You know, she's seen the impact. The ones closest are problematic. They, they don't mix. That's correct. All right, uh, Sharon from Marshall. Hi, Sharon. Hello, my question is about an amaryllis. I got this plant for Christmas and we just delighted in watching it grow and bloom. Mm -hmm. So now that it's finished blooming, what do I do with it? Okay, you can leave that big tall stem on until that starts to um, wrinkle up, then remove that. The leaves will come, they're big strap-like leaves, treat it as a house plant, put it in a sunny window, and then I, li I like to move it outside during the summer, keep it watered, and then before danger of frost, you can either cut it back or just um, um, stop watering it and let that, the, the energy from those leaves go back into the plant, wait two months, and then start the whole process Put it like again. in the basement or something? Yeah, just let it rest for a couple of months okay. and then start over. All right, we're out of time. A lot of garden questions. That's encouraging. People are thinking it's spring. Yes. Thanks for calling in. If you're on the line, Taylor Linda will talk to you off the air. We'll see you next time. Very good. Chris has one final check of the forecast. Well, it should be starting to feel like spring during this time of the year, but we do still have a little bit of winter left in the tank. You are feeling that with those temperatures out there today. Highs this afternoon we are only going to make it towards six degrees, but as we go through the end of the next seven to 10 days, we will see those temperatures coming closer to 40, which is where our average highs should be this time of the year. All right, that's our time for now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here at four. In the meantime, have a great afternoon.